underneath my feet and I dream. Okay, welcome to Sean Moore's Val Valley Model Railroad Update. Um, we'll cover a bunch of things. If you've been watching some of my shorter videos, you've probably seen a lot of the new things on the layout, but I thought I'd make an update that encompasses most of it. Um, as you can see, the yard was ballasted, except for these two tracks here. Um, there's going to be a switch put in here and just a little bit bigger shelf than what we have up here for the bridge. Um, there's going to be a small power plant put in here. Um, a destination for all the coal that we run on the layout. But we got the yard ballasted. Um, we have, I use a builder stand for my dirt and cinders for the yard ballast. Kind of take a walk here, check out the rest of the yard. As we're checking it out, you'll notice that the the main lines here got ballasted as well, so we'll take a, a look at them. Came out pretty good, I think. You can definitely see the, the uh, main line versus the yard. Uh, it's an older yard, a railroad that was swallowed up by the uh, N&W and then Norfolk Southern. So it's been around a while and hasn't seen a huge amount of maintenance. I still want to put some fragmentation of weeds here and there along the yard. Okay, here's an update that I guess kind of went south on us. I put three dwarf signals. You can't, this one doesn't seem to be lit right now, but there's one protecting the yard lead coming in, the main line coming this way. And this one's supposed to protect the main line that way for the yard lead switch. Again, this is a switch for the yard lead. And the idea was when you threw the switch over, the main line coming in would be red, proceed green off of the yard, and then the other dwarf. But unfortunately, this one doesn't go to green when we line it back for the yard. Now, it's a real simple thing to do. Um, this isn't any hocus pocus magic. All it is is a tiny reed switch right here. Let's see if I can focus in on it. Um, kind of hard to see it. There you now you can see it. And all it does is when I throw the switch, the blade of the limit switch moves this way and it opens and closes the contacts, which turn on or off the LEDs inside the dwarfs. So that's the first bit of signaling we got done on the layout, which sadly already needs to be repaired. Um, again, we'll move on. You can see more of the ballasting. Um, this track here, which seems to be out of service up to this point, that's my programming track. So I kind of made it look like a, an abandoned track that's no longer used, except for the portion I need to use. So we'll cruise along here the main line. Um, haven't done much yet with this section. In fact, I quit ballasting at the bridge because bridges need to be removed when we do the scenery, which we'll probably be starting that soon. I gotta get some pink foam and start building it. So the track here didn't get weathered and it's not glued in. The bridge tracks through both bridges are removable here. So we we'll take the bridges out when we do the scenery. Continuing on into the town of still water which all the main lines are ballasted here and all the sidings now still water seems to be where the most work took place um, I got my roads done and that was quite the job I had quite a few crossings to take care of I love this scene, and it's not quite complete yet. I only have a backhoe, I don't know how that happened. Um, I've got some maintenance away trucks downstairs that i got to paint up and get them up here, and I want to get, i got to order a couple more. When money is around. Um, so what I did here, let me pan back so you can see it. You can see the road is not completed across 
the main line. Um, I made it look like a construction site. You can see several black ties that have been replaced as opposed to all the brown ones that have been there a while and some new ballast. Um, and I'll show you the reason why I did this. Now I did manage to um, do this crossing through this turnout. It wasn't easy by any shape of the imagination. And to getting the trains running afterwards was a whole lot of fun. And I decided that we didn't need to do that to the main line. So it'll forever be a construction site, which will look pretty interesting. I still have to get a railroad gate crossing here and on the other side. So we'll move on a little bit here. More of the tracks that got ballasted. And yet another road. And this one is completely through, but doesn't exactly go through the crossover, so it wasn't very hard to do the crossings. Take a little look here. Now, somebody's already probably wondering how I did my roads. I did make a small video of them. This really is foam board. Um, like that new gator board or foam board you'd get at Walmart or the dollar store. And it's painted with this paint I found at Walmart that uh, was marked um, pavement or asphalt. It has a beautiful color. So I painted the roads after they were glued in and I sanded them before I put my striping on. These striping kits, um, believe it or not, are supposed to be O scale. It's funny how they look more like HO than anything. I mean, we'll compare it here on this team to the backhoe and to the uh, people. They're pretty good for uh, a major road, so um, I'm real happy with them. They're made by a company called Red Lion out of Pennsylvania who makes and sells them. Um, you can find them online or check one of my videos. I did do a video on how to make roads not too long ago. Um, I have another road up here in the town of Wilson. As you can see, it's kind of a hard one. And this one has some um, cracks in the road that I simulated with a magic marker for a test. I figured this road was hidden and out of sight so that it would be easier to experiment with. And this needs crossing gates as well as this road down here. But I guess all things in due time. Not a bit of green vegetation yet. And one last thing I want to show you, and you may have already caught it or not. Um, I got the buildings in the back lit, and as you can just see there, they're set um, to a set of Arduinos that turn the lights on and off at random. So it looks like rooms and floors are being turned on and off. So it's kind of cool, it's, we can sit here forever and watch it. Um, the only thing that really bums me out, for some odd reason, the office which is lit now is usually really bright and it's barely lit. I believe there's a wire that's halfway broken through and I need someone up here to watch it while I go downstairs with or underneath the layout with an alligator clip and test each wire and someone will say hey when it comes on but when I can flag my oldest daughter to help me I'll get her to do that as you can see now the lights are off and they're coming back on now this is one of three buildings that's like this they're kind of cool a little shimmy on down here this is the other building that has lights that come on and off. So we'll sit here and take a second or two to watch them. Hopefully, there goes one. Like I said there's two little computers that run two eight segments of relays and they turn on and off at random, a different section. And it gives the rooms for the appearance that someone's living in the building or working in the building, and these are factories. Okay, what we're looking at here is my random room or floor lights on and off for my HO scale model railroad buildings. What I have here are two Arduino Unos, and each of these is a bank of relays. There's eight relays on each bank. And what happens is when they're turned on, the Arduino goes through a real small program and it randomly chooses which relay to turn on or off and then how much of a delay between the next cycle. So, when you see a red light come on, that means that relay is on and that room will be dark or power off. 
So for right now we're using a battery to run it, which is 12 volts. So I'm going to start it up here. Okay, you can see the rooms are starting to change. There comes another one. And I found because they run the same program, at first they'll start to look like they're in sync. And after a little bit of time they'll get out of sync. And that has to do with the fact that even in a computer like these little Arduinos, random is not as random as we'd like it to be. It's not a true random thing. Here you can see I got two rooms off on each one, but they're not the same two rooms. Alrighty. So next we'll take this up and install it on the layout and we'll see it in action. I'm wondering now, maybe this was something that was better off done on houses instead of factories. And the building I just finished here a couple days ago is my Centennial Mills. And it has the same lighting in it that sections of it are floors. On this one go on and off as the computer turns them on and off. There goes another one. So I'll kind of add some interesting things while you're running your trains and looking around that you got lights going on and off. Um, I'll show you real quick where I mounted my relays and Arduinos. I'm going to go underneath the layout here. It's kind of hard to see because it's so dark. But uh, there's two Arduinos and they're the little boards on the right and two 12 volt, or not 12 volt, but they're 5 volt um, relay banks. Each relay is, each bank has eight relays. The uh, row of red lights on the left, for each red light that shows one room that is currently turned off, when they're all dark, they're all on. And they just sit there doing their random little code. Um, eventually I'll have the code for this, for those of you who like working with Arduinos, on my website for downloading. So, let's see. That kind of covers most of what I've been doing this month. That was actually quite a lot. Um, I'm going to pause the camera and turn out the lights and see what we see with the lights off. Okay, we're standing at the far side so we can see all the factories at once. And we'll see the different lights coming on and off. And you'll notice that there are light buildings on the layout that don't have this. Um, I was thinking that having every building with lights that go on and off would be kind of a, a bummer, possibly. So that I only set it up with, so far with these three factories. We'll get a little closer here. I did put interiors in the buildings, I don't know how well they're going to show up, but hopefully. This one, oh, there, now it went out, but we'll scoop down here to this one. I'm sure now the office light's on in the other one. Really what? <laughs> thing went out. There, now you can see the office. There's several people in there having a board meeting. There's no real interior in the uh, Centennial Mills building. Um, when I was working on it, I was remembering my mother worked at GE, and she'd go in quite early in the morning and we'd drive past on the way to the babysitter. And I remember some of the windows being lit, but you couldn't see anything in it because they were dirty and whatnot, but you could see that they were lit. And the two loading docks that are lit there. And 
the one of the factories in town. Well, that one, I love that one. It's lit up pretty good now. Everything with the office, you can kind of see the interior. One of my favorite buildings, Sick and Tire. That came out really nice. Well, quickly we'll look at the diesel shops. Yard office. Kind of neat looking down the yard, seeing the dwarf lights lit there. It would be better if that could loose it and had a blinking Fred on it. Apparently Fred's not going to get a paycheck this week. Well guys, thank you for tuning in. Um, I'll have another uh, layout update and we'll show you some of the other projects we've got going on. Thanks for watching. In our next layout update, what's going on in Wilson? Then we'll see what's in store for this empty field. And we'll see about this empty space over here. What could possibly go here? Countryside.